future nurses let's talk about these six important electrolytes nursing students are always tested on okay and as always i have endless review on fluids and electrolytes imbalance on my youtube channel at scrub and spoon go review it now let's go okay you may be wondering what are electrolytes electrolytes are minerals in the body that controls body function electrolytes are found in your blood in the body fluids and in the cells okay and they help the body system to work properly so think of electrolytes as your body's electric sparks that keeps your heart beating keeps your muscle moving and keeps your brain working now let's talk about what causes electrolyte imbalance when electrolytes get too high or too low we call it electrolyte imbalance but what the body wants is the body wants the fluids and the electrolytes in the body to be balanced okay so number one cause of electrolyte imbalance is fluid loss fluid loss through vomiting diarrhea sweating and diuretics okay the next cause is lack of intake remember most of these electrolytes are obtained from food we eat so lack of intake like starvation poor diet or nothing by mouth status can cause electrolyte imbalance next one overhydration or fluid overload can dilute the electrolytes in the body when there's too much fluid in the body okay another cause can be severe illness like burns because that will put the electrolytes out of balance renal disease or even trauma also water loss like dehydration increase electrolytes concentration next one organ failure organs like kidney like liver if they fails that will put the electrolytes in the body out of balance because they regulate electrolytes in the body lastly therapies slash treatments which includes taking medications iv fluids treatments can put the electrolytes in out of balance can cause electrolytes imbalance medications like um like steroids like diuretics can cause shift in electrolytes and that can put electro cause electrolytes imbalance okay now let's go into each electrolyte one at a time the first one we talk about is sodium now sodium normal range or therapeutic range is between 135 to 145 anything lower than 135 we have hyponatremia and we, when it goes above 145 we have hypernatremia now what's the main function of sodium in the body sodium helps to regulate fluid balance and blood volume okay also when you think about sodium think about swells the body because sodium helps the body to retain water so wherever sodium goes water follows sodium is also regulated by these two hormones the adh hormone and the aldosterone hormone which help the body the body to retain sodium let's talk about food source for sodium you will see there's a lot of sodium in um processed meats and cheese fast food and also um canned food a lot of sodium so let's talk about signs of hyponatremia that is when the sodium goes below 135 patients may exhibit confusion because of the hyponatremia muscle cramps nausea and in severe hyponatremia seizure and how can you treat hyponatremia you can give the patient hypertonic fluids like three percent normal saline sodium chloride okay also when the sodium is low it means the patient doesn't have enough sodium so there can be sodium replacements like giving the patient more um, sodium rich food so let's go to when there is hypernatremia signs and symptoms with hypernatremia so in hypernatremia you will see thirst polyuria dry mucous membrane because of that polyuria restlessness and in severe hypernatremia seizure can also happen now how can you treat hypernatremia okay you can give them hypotonic fluids hypotonic fluid like 0.45 sodium chloride normal saline and remember with hypotonic fluids because they make the cell swell like a hippo so you have to infuse it slowly to prevent cerebral edema swelling in the brain also when sodium is too high what do you do you reduce the intake of sodium so reduce um intake of sodium um rich food now let's go to the next one let's talk about potassium potassium um, normal range is between 3.5 to 5 one of the main functions of potassium is it helps the cardiac muscle, that is the heart muscle, to pump blood to the rest of the body, okay? It also controls cardiac rhythm. So when you're thinking about potassium, think about pump. It helps the heart, the cardiac muscle, to pump blood. Let's talk about food source for potassium. Potassium rich food like bananas, avocado, green leafy vegetables, spinach contains potassium. Now let's talk about hypokalemia, that is when potassium goes below 3.5, okay? signs and symptoms you will see dysrhythmia muscle weakness or cramps or muscle cramps okay fatigue and lethargy and you will see flattened t waves if the patient is on ecg now let's talk about treatment option for hypokalemia we have hypokalemia because there is low potassium 
in the body so what can you do potassium replacement you can give potassium replacement or potassium supplement so um and that can be given via um either orally like potassium um, supplement pill orally or even through iv now take note before giving potassium you have to check the kidney function why because the kidney helps to excrete excess potassium out of the body now if the kidneys are not functioning well what would that do potassium will be retained in the body and when there is potassium in the body what does that cause hyperkalemia and you will know that hyperkalemia is dangerous to the heart so that's why you have to check the kidney function like check the bun check the creatine level because that will tell you how well the kidneys are functioning and also when giving um iv potassium never i repeat never push iv potassium why because this will cause instant cardiac arrest because potassium itself directly affects the heart electrical activity so if you give iv push of potassium iv push cardiac arrest you don't want to lose your license so you have to infuse it slowly and potassium is always uh diluted with iv fluids and infused slowly okay and another treatment for hypo um, kalemia is to increase potassium rich food like bananas like green leafy and um, veggies spinach that i've mentioned above like avocados okay now let's talk about signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia this is when potassium goes above five you can see hypotension muscle cramps or twitching bradycardia or irregular pulse also you see dysrhythmia in hyperkalemia peaked t waves and possible cardiac arrest hyperkalemia is dangerous to the heart now treatment option for hyperkalemia give them potassium wasting directed like diuretics like furosemide also insulin helps to shift potassium into the cell so so when you're using insulin to shift potassium into the cell remember insulin will also shift blood sugar into the cell so what do you do you give destroys to um, prevent hypoglycemia if you are using potassium to shift if you are using insulin to shift potassium into the cell and lastly you can decrease the intake of potassium rich food okay so let's move on to the next the next electrolyte is calcium now normal range for calcium is 9 to 11 so use the mnemonic call 911 to remember calcium ranges between 9 to 11 call we start with c will remind you calcium and 911 will remind you the range of calcium now the ranges i'm mentioning in the video in this video maybe may differ from the ranges your textbook or the resource your school is using but trust me i know they will not be too far apart okay now what is the main function of um, calcium calcium help to cre create or build strong bone calcium also help cardiac muscle contraction and it is also it also help in blood clotting now calcium is controlled by these three um hormones the first one is parathyroid hormone this increase um, calcium concentration in the blood the next hormone is calcitonin hormone this help to put um, calcium into the blood into the bone and the last hormone is calcitriol these help to control um, blood calcium now calcium rich foods includes oranges green leafy veggies almonds and dairy products like milk okay i need you to know that calcium have inverse relationship with phosphate when calcium goes up phosphate goes down okay and this is so because they are both controlled by the parathyroid hormone now how does this work parathyroid hormone increase calcium level by pulling calcium from bone and reabsorbing it into the kidney now the results will be decreased phosphate level this is because the parathyroid hormone that controls both um, calcium and phosphate makes kidney excrete phosphate so when calcium goes up phosphate goes down when, when phosphate goes up calcium goes down okay now let's talk about signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia that is calcium level that is below nine um the hallmark um signs and symptoms for hypocalcemia is chivostex sign and trusso sign now what is chivostex sign this is um facial twitching when it is touched when a patient's cheeks are being touched the, the face starts to twitch so facial twitching when the facial nerves are touched and trusso sign is when blood pressure cuffs are on and it's running the patient's hand turns downward that's trusso sign and these are hallmark of hypo calcemia another hallmark of hypocalcemia is numbness slash tingling around the mouth and fingers you can also see titani which is involuntary muscle contraction or spasm now treatment for hypocalcemia um we have lack of um calcium right so you can increase calcium rich food to help with the hypocalcemia calcium supplements can also be given now let's go to hypercalcemia signs and symptoms you see with hypercalcemia when calcium goes above 11 you will see muscle weakness fatigue lethargy decreased reflexes 
constipation, nausea, kidney stones, and um, seizure in severe cases of hypercalcemia. Now, treatment option for hypercalcemia gives 0.9 um, normal saline sodium chloride to treat hypercalcemia. Also, you can give um, calcitonin because calcitonin helps to reduce calcium from the blood into the bone. Right? Now, the next electrolyte we go into is magnesium. Magnesium normal range is from 1.5 to 2.5. Main function of magnesium is uh, muscle and nerve function. They also function in cardiac rhythm stabilization. And it also helps to regulate calcium and potassium. Magnesium um, food source includes green leafy veggies, spinach, almonds, yogurt. Now let's talk about signs and symptoms of hypomagnesemia. You will see hyperreflexia, tremors, muscle cramps. You can see um, trisad de pointis. This is a particular type of dysrhythmia. Okay, in, you can see that in um, hypomagnesemia. And you can also see tachycardia. Now let's talk about treatment option for hypomagnesemia. You can give magnesium supplements. The patients can also be encouraged to increase magnesium rich food. Okay, let's go to hypermagnesemia. Now with hypermagnesemia, the reverse is the case. In hypermagnesemia, everything is low. Hyporeflexia, muscle weakness, bradycardia, hypotension, lethargy, and in severe cases, um, respiratory depression. Now let's talk about treatment option for hypermagnesemia. You can give furosemide to help get rid of the excess magnesium. And you can also give calcium to um, help with um, the cardiac stabilization. So calcium is given to reverse the cardiac effect of hypermagnesemia. The next electrolyte we talk about is chloride. Normal range for chloride is 95 to 105. Now, main function of um, um, chloride, it helps to maintain acid-base and osmotic balance. That is, it helps to maintain healthy fluid volume in the body. Now, food source for chloride can be found in salt, like sodium chloride, right? Sodium is salt and chloride. So chloride can be gotten from food source like salt and um, salt substitutes. Now, signs and symptoms of hypochloremia, low blood pressure, irritability, confusion, dehydration, weakness, metabolic alkalosis. Treatment option for um, hypochloremia is 0.9 normal saline hypotonic fluids. Lactate ring gas is another alternative because they help to restore electrolytes and fluid volume. Now let's talk about signs and symptoms of hyperchloremia, hypertension, confusion, drowsiness, rapid respiration. Now let's talk about treatment option for hyperchloremia. 5% distress in water can be given because this helps to dilute chloride level. Balanced crystalloid like plasma lights can also be used to correct chloride. And the last electrolyte we talk about is phosphate. Normal rate for phosphate is 2.5 to 4.5. Now, one of the main functions of phosphate is it also helps with bone formation. It works with calcium to also help build strong teeth. And finally, it helps in acid-base balance. Now, food source for phosphate includes beans, dairy products, and meat. Now, let's talk about signs and symptoms of hypophosphatemia, muscle weakness, decreased deep tendon reflexes, confusion, irritability, weak pulse, hypotension, and bone pain. So how do you treat um, low phosphate, that is hypophosphatemia? You can use potassium phosphate, IV, and this is used if patients also have hypokalemia. And also you can use sodium phosphate. This is used even if a potassium level is high or low. Always check calcium level because calcium have an inverse relationship with phosphate. Let's talk about signs and symptoms of hyperphosphatemia. Uh, you will see titani, muscle cramp, tingling, calcification of soft tissue. Okay, now let's talk about treatment option for hyperphosphatemia. Avoid phosphate containing solution. That is, avoid um, fluids or solutions that contain phosphate. And lastly, hydration plus loop diuretics help to eliminate phosphate. All right, guys, see you in the NCLEX review video.